Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's session. Um, in today's class, we're going to be looking through how to evaluate a business opportunity. So if great enough, you've already created a business idea, or you think you want to start a business, you think you want to be an entrepreneur, and you already have an opinion on what exactly you're going to be doing, but you're not 100% certain whether it's viable or not. Now, in evaluating of a business opportunity, what you're pretty much saying is, okay, I know I want to be an entrepreneur, but I want to get as much information as I possibly can so that when I start my business, it is as viable as it can be. When I start my business, it is something that people would actually see value in. It is something that people would actually determine to part away with their money or with their hard-earned resource to invest into the business. And so that is what we're going to be going through today. We're going to be seeing what are the key steps you need to take? What are the key things you need to do before you can actually say, yes, this is a business that has the potential to grow in the nearest future. So in evaluating the business opportunity, pretty much what you're doing is you're going through an entrepreneurial process. So the entrepreneurial process is just the process of starting a new venture. So from start all the way to you get to a sport where you think that your business is good enough or is strong enough to stand on its own. And in the entrepreneurial process, there are four major stages. The first stage is identification and evaluation of an opportunity. So you have to be sure that this is a great idea. You have to be sure that people are going to be willing to part away with their money to give you as a business owner. Right. So just making sure, getting all the information, assessing the environment, thinking through who your customers are, thinking through who your what your revenue stream would be, thinking through how you get your products and services to your customers, thinking through your supply chain. All of that will come under the identification and evaluation of an opportunity. The next step is the development of a business plan. So now you've decided that this is actually potentially a viable business. Now let's create a document. So your business plan is a blueprint. Let's create a document that pretty much shows us the exact stages and steps that we're going to take for the next few months or for the first few years of the business itself. Then when that is done, you now determine the resources required. Now the resources that you would require would actually be shown in your business plan. So based on what you have, your blueprint for the future, based on what you want to do or how you want to run your business, it's easier for you to determine what the resources that are needed are, and then finally, how you're going to manage the business. So let's talk about the first one. We're going to be talking more about the identification and evaluation of an opportunity in this particular session. But as we go on, we're going to go into the business plan and think through what the resources you need would be and how to manage your business itself. So let's start with the first one, identification and evaluation of an opportunity. So think about this as the stage where you're thinking about, is this really viable? What exactly is my idea? What exactly is the business I want to start? Okay, would people actually pay money for it? Will people actually look for my product or try to pay for my service? How do I get into the market itself? These are the key things you want to talk about when you are evaluating the, ident um, the opportunity itself. So in idea generation, which is the first step, this is the basics. So you know you want to start a business, you know you want to be an entrepreneur, but you're, or you know you want to go into more contract work, but you're not 100% certain what kind of idea or what kind of business you want to start. In generating your idea, there are several ways people would go about this. Sometimes you go through your occupation. So if you've been an accountant, let's say for 10 years, it kind of makes sense if your business is an accounting firm. Why? Because you've already gained all the experience, you've gained the knowledge to actually be a great accountant. And so when you're coming into your business, you're coming from a place of knowledge, you're coming from a place of experience, and maybe you've already made some contact or some network in the same field. So it makes it so easy for you to start a business that is aligned with that. Now, the next one could be looking at the current economic trends or industry trends and starting a business based on that. So right now, the stock market is one of the major things that you'd hear on the news, you'd hear on Twitter, you'd hear on Facebook, you'd hear everywhere you go, um, you know, with the, the volatility of the stock market. So maybe a business idea based on everything that is happening is trying to understand what is happening within the, um, the stock market and then thinking about it from an investor's perspective. 
So what if I create a platform that helps investors to easily understand the stock market? Or what if I create a platform that is zero fee so that anyone can try to, you know, start investing even though they don't have enough money to start in the first place? Or what if I create a practice trading account or trading platform where people can practice as much as possible before they finally put their money into the stock market. So just looking at the current trend, the current economy, that would help you shape or think through what your business idea might be. Now the next one is hobbies. What are you good at? What do you like doing? So you like painting. Maybe I want to start a business that sells artwork. Or I like teaching. Maybe I want to go into some level of some business that is more education specific. Or what is your passion? What, what would you wake up? What would they wake you up in the middle of the night to do that you would absolutely not complain? Now think about that and maybe there's a business idea behind there. Or through personal experiences. So maybe you've gone through a lot of things or gone through certain things in the past and you think, hey, I have experienced this first time. Maybe I can start a business aligned with this. So let's assume you're an immigrant. So let's say Canada, for example, you went through the immigration process. You already know how it's done. You know what the steps are. And then you decide, hmm, maybe I can actually get a qualification and become an immigrant consultant or become an immigration consultant. Or maybe you happen to come across videos and all your life you've always been playing around with making videos, making movies for home or for your friends and family. And then you think about that and say, oh, maybe because I've been doing this, I've had the experience, I can actually start a business from this. Or maybe you like traveling. And then you realize that I've traveled to a lot of countries. People need a lot of information about travel. Maybe I can provide them with some of this information. Or thinking about it from observation. So looking around, what are the things that people actually would want? What are the things that people need at the moment? So everyone is stuck at home. Maybe I can create some sort of um, service that gives you some level of company that is still protected that would enable you not feel as lonely as you probably feel based on everything that's happening in the world. So you can also start a business or get an idea through observation, looking at your surrounding, looking at existing products and services, and then also through deliberate searches. So you can have a focus group where you call a couple of people, call together a couple of them. Um, potential individuals in the economy or in your environment and ask them, let's brainstorm. Let's talk about what ideas can maybe be the future of the world. So what a lot of entrepreneurs do, especially the ones that are more into venture capitalists and the ones that are more interested in just creating a system and selling out the idea or selling out the systems to others, what they usually would do is rather than just coming up with an idea that might not work, they call a number of people, get a number of people together and then brainstorm through everything that is happening in the world and where we project or see the world in in about five, 10 years. And based on all of that information, they can create certain ideas that might be potential businesses that would really, really grow and a place for you to explore more. All right. So these are ways, these are ways that you can find or think through an idea or think through ideas that you can start up as a business. Now, I want you to think about this and think about three potential business ideas that you can work on. Where did you get this business idea from? Is it observation? Is it because of your passion? Is it because of your current experience? Is it because of what you're studying in school? And then make sure you provide enough information to actually back up your thoughts on this idea. Now, the next thing we're going to go into is how to assess the business opportunities. So yes, we know that we already have an idea, but now the question is, is this idea viable? Would people actually pay money for this particular idea? And in doing that, we usually will have two main ways of assessing an idea or assessing an opportunity. There's a qualitative, which is more um, theoretical, it is more verbal, and then there's a quantitative, which is looking more at feasibility, looking at the financial perspectives to the business. So in qualitative, we're trying to see if the business idea actually aligns with the individual's goals. So you as an entrepreneur, the idea that you have, is it something that aligns with your goals? Is it something that aligns with your expectations? 
are there actually customers, potential customers that will pay for your product and services? Are there actually suppliers that will provide you with the necessary equipment or resources that you need for your business? Then there's a quantitative part, which is more financial, which is seeing, okay, how many people would be in the market? How many of this market would I be able to get? And then based on that, how much percentage of returns would I get as an entrepreneur or from this particular business? So let's go through qualitative first. So in determining your qualitative assessment of your business, you're pretty much just asking a lot of questions to see how good or how potentially great your business idea is. So for example, what product or service would the business provide? How would we offer this business, this value to customers? Are we going to be a virtual business? Are we going to be face to face? What is the value we're bringing that customers would actually pay for? How would we enter the market? Are we going to merge with another organization? Are we going to go into a partnership? Are we going to start from our immediate friends and family? What will be our competitive advantage? What is that thing that is going to set you apart? Who will your customers be? Why would a customer say, mm, of all the businesses that provide this particular service, of all the individuals that provide this particular service, I would pay for the one you are providing? Why would customers say that? You want to also look at the industry and the environment that your business will be operating in. So what is the trend in this industry? Is there some level of monopoly in this industry? Is there a particular organization or individual that dominates this industry? How can I effectively compete with them? How will I market my product and services? How will I ensure the product and services get to my consumers? Where will I get my supplies from? What will my startup costs be? So these are a couple of things that you're going to think about when you're looking at the qualitative perspective to analyzing the idea that you have. And we're going to look at quantitative perspective. But the first thing I want us to think about is thinking of how would you actually break into the market? So this is a question you usually would ask in terms of qualitative. So that's the second question here. How will you enter the market? In terms of entering the market, there are three major ways, and I think we've talked about this in earlier conversations. There are three major ways. It's either you're offering a totally new product, so there is no demand, there is no supply, you are the one that is bringing the demand, or you're providing a supply and making people know that, oh, this is actually a product that I might need. So there's no demand, there's no supply, you are the first one bringing in this into the particular country or bringing it into an industry or bringing this idea out that people are actually maybe going to be interested in or offering an existing product to a different market or industry. So for example, maybe something has been done a lot in retail. Um, let's think about sustainability. So there's a lot of sustainability focus when it comes to retail or retail, the retail industry. So maybe you're going to think about this from the film and TV perspective. What can we bring to the table? Why can what can we bring that already exists and works in the retail industry in terms of sustainability into the film and TV industry? Or maybe this has been working in the face-to-face -face environment or in a physical setting. Now, how can we transfer this into something that people can actually purchase or get access to online? Or even thinking about it from a different country. So maybe this is something that you're used to in your home country, and now you're in Canada, you're in the U.S., how exactly can we bring this idea into fulfillment, or how can we bring this um, thing that people are used to into this new country? So this, and that's another way in which you can determine how to break into the market. And then finally, there's nothing wrong with offering a product that is already in the market or with similar idea in the market to the same market, but just to maybe a different group of people or just offering something that would make others, consumers come to you rather than to the other um, organization. So when you go into the store, you want to buy butter, for example, you have 10 different options of butter to buy. You have 10 different options of almost anything you want to buy in the store. These businesses are competing in the same industry, but every single one of them has something that sets them apart. So one can say, oh, it's our price. We're going to offer it to you at the lowest price. So even if it's just $1, you realize that it might not be that bad because there's some level of difference to it. Or maybe thinking about your own environmental process. So, hey, the way we actually produce our own product is a little bit different from how others produce the same product. And so we're going to 
use that as a selling point that will make other people to buy our product rather than buy from another organization. So three major ways that you can break into the market, you can break by bringing in a new product so there's no demand, there's no supply for this particular product or service, or offering a similar product that is already existing to existing market, but just thinking about what will set your own product apart, or maybe offering a product that is in a different market into a new market or into a new industry. Now, based on that, other questions you want to ask before you start your business is to see what your competitive advantage is. So with competitive advantage, we're saying, what is that thing that sets you apart from your competitors? What is that thing that you have that would make consumers come and buy your product or pay for your product or service rather than paying for another person or another product or another service? So you always want to have a competitive advantage when you're starting a business, especially if you're going into an existing market. The truth is there are going to be so many cons so many um, businesses that are probably doing things that are very similar to what you're doing. So what is that thing that will set your business apart? You have to think through that at the beginning of your business itself. Now, let's go on to the quantitative assessment. So with quantitative assessment, we're looking more at numbers. We're looking more at a feasibility study. So we're trying to determine whether or not a business is financially viable. So except it's a non-for-profit, if it's a for-profit business, that means you have to be making money. And for you to be making money, we want to be sure that there's just enough consumers, there's just enough market share for you, and there's just enough opportunities for you to make a profit or make get some revenue from the market. So in doing your feasibility analysis or your financial, your quantitative assessment, there are three major things that you're going to be looking at. The first one is, what is the general market potential for this business? So how many people would actually pay for this kind of product or pay for this particular type of service? And we're going to look into how to determine what the revenue, potential revenue is for a business. Then the next thing is, how, what is the estimated market share? So when we're thinking about market share, we're saying how what is the size of the market and then how many percentage or what is the opportunity for us to take a level, a level, a level of percentage from this particular market. And then finally, based on that, what can we get in return? So how much are we going to make? And by the time we take out all our expenses from the business, from the cost of running the business, how much are we going to make in terms of income or in terms of profit? for the business itself. All right, so moving on, let's talk through, let's talk through how to calculate the market potential, which is the first part. So in calculating the market potential, what we're trying to do is to arrive at a dollar or unit sales estimate for the total market. So we're saying, what exactly is the market potential? How much can we make from this market in its total? So we want to see what is the potential market sale, or what is the potential value, dollar value, that we might have from this particular business. So for example, the first thing we want to say is, what is the market area? So how many people are in this particular market, or what is the total population that you might have to get um, a particular business in that area. So that's the first thing you want to do. There are 10,000 people in, let's say, Burnaby, and my business is going to be operating in Burnaby. So 10,000 is the market potential that you have for this particular business. The next thing is, let's see, is there revenue sales or revenue statistics for the market area for the product or service that we want? So there are 10,000 people in Burnaby. Um, is there a potential for us to get all 10,000 people to buy a certain product or buy a certain service? If that is possible, then okay, we already have a figure. So 10,000 people are going to, are in the population. 10,000 people would generally need this particular product. So that is a big size. We can already estimate how much we might be able to make if we sell a product for let's say $5 and the 10,000 people, so you're doing 10,000 times five. And then finally, we're going to keep adjusting. So sometimes we get statistics, for example, saying that there are 10,000 people in Burnaby, but chances are that 
this 10,000 people are not going to be buying this product. This 10,000 people are not going to be buying this particular service. So as time goes on, as you keep finding out information, by the time you still do, keep doing research and going out to see what is really existing in the market, you might be changing where your market potential is. So your market potential, again, just to start from the beginning is, what is the total market or total potential for us to make some money from this particular market? So how many people are in this market? What is the population? Now, assuming every single person is buying this product at $10, how much is the entire amount that we can most likely make from the total market in itself? Now, based on that, we already know that it's almost impossible for you to get the entire market. So we have a total population of 10,000 10, people. We have a product for, let's say, $1 per product. And then we're assuming that we can sell 10,000 times one in the whole market. So that is $10,000 potential revenue. But technically, because there's some level of competition, you might not be able to get the entire market. So now the question is, what is the percentage of that market that you can get? 10,000 people want to buy soap, but you most likely cannot afford to get the entire 10,000 people. So what is the percentage of your people, of those people that you can actually get access to? And in doing that, what you're creating is what is your market share? So your market share can be based on the specific location you are. So the um, we looked at the whole population for Burnaby, but you're most likely not going to get the entire Burnaby population. So maybe you are at Metro Town. How many people actually come into Metro Town, right? What is the proposed size of Metro Town compared to the entire Burnaby? Now, what is the strength of your competitors? So some competitors are stronger than you. They've been in the business for a lot of years. They might actually have a lot of consumers that are loyal to them and that would actually not, um, they might have some consumers that are loyal to them and that might actually not want to leave their own business to come to you. So you have to put into consideration that those that particular percentage will not come to your business. And then based on that, you keep making adjustments. So by the time we do this calculation, maybe we'll realize that out of the entire 100% of people or population in Burnaby, the only number of percentage that we can actually get access to is 20%. Reason is we are only in a small area um, there are a lot of competitors that already have established consumer base and maybe we cannot tap into them. So we can start with 20%. So if we get 20% of the entire market share, that means we're getting 20,000 people to buy our product. And that is a revenue of $20,000, which comparatively is not so bad for a startup or it's not so bad for a small business. So now the key thing is right now, while we're doing this based on calculations of the top of our head, in reality, what you're going to do is to go out there and get data. So have conversations with people. If you interview 10 people or if you ask 10 people if they would buy your product and only 2% or two people out of the 10 people say they would buy your product, that automatically tells you that maybe the only potential you have is 20% of the entire market and this thing keeps changing as time goes on so that's why just like in step one which was determining what the market potential is when you're determining what the market share is give room for adjustments and so by the time we go into our business plan you'd see that sometimes you wouldn't say oh 20 percent of the people would actually buy my product sometimes you say between 20 to 40 percent and so you do a calculation for 20 percent do a calculation of 30 percent do a calculation of 40 percent based on all of these different scenarios maybe one of them would actually buy your product all right now finally okay so a quick thing that i needed to say is in determining market share, um, the way you do it for a retail organization or the retail industry is a little bit different from how you did from other industries. So for example, service industry is different. Uh, manufacturing industry is a little bit different. So for retail industry, the key, easiest way for you to do it is to estimate the total amount of selling space in the market for the product being sold by the new business. Estimate the size of your proposed store. So you obviously cannot sell more than the amount of the space you have in your store. And now based on that, you're going to calculate your market share based on your selling space. So what is the venue? What is the size of your retail space? That will determine how much you can sell. But in the online world, it doesn't really play that way because you're able to access consumers from a 
different demography, you're able to assess customers from a different um, geographical location. So you're not constrained based on your retail store space, but you're open to a larger pool of people. Now in the manufacturing industry, what you're calculating is based on your total productive capacity. So what is the total productive capacity in the market for the product that you want to manufacture? So all the manufacturers, excuse me, of soap can make only up to 10,000 um, bars of soap in, in a period. So now based on that, you're going to think, what, am I, what capacity do I have or how exactly, what is the space that my own manufacturing plant has? So if your plant, for example, can only make 300 um, bars of soap in a period, in a certain period, it just kind of makes sense that your market share is going to be only 300 out of the entire 10,000 space or capacity that the entire industry has. So you want to always consider what capacity you have, what space you have to determine what your market share would be. And then for the service industry, which is a little bit different because really it's not based on space, but it's based on the entire service capacity. It's more in line with, okay, how much can you produce or how much services can you actually offer? So for example, it's only you that is an accountant, how many records or how many taxes can you do in a period? Are you able to do up to 10 taxes? Are you able to file up to 15 taxes? Based on your own specific capacity, that would determine what your market share would be. Now, finally, we know what the total population is. We know what um, your share is of that population. Now, the question is, what revenue are you bringing in? So in calculating the net income and cash flow, really what you're doing is, based on your market share figure, um, assuming that you're getting 20% of a $10,000 industry, that means your revenue is $20,000. Now, out of that $20,000, how much would you put out for your expenses? So let's say in the first year, our expenses are $10,000. So we know that we've brought in $20,000. We have expenses of $10,000. So that means that our income or our sorry our profit at the end of the period is ten thousand dollars if your profit at the end of your first year is ten thousand dollars if your revenue can cover up your expenses then that's a great sign that's a sign that okay this is actually a viable business that maybe you should continue thinking about but if you're in a situation where you have a revenue of let's say ten thousand dollars but then your cost or your expenses are thirty thousand dollars in the first year it's, it's understandable but if you run the records for let's say five years and even up to the fifth year, your expenses are still doubling or tripling your revenue, then at this point, you probably want to have a rethink and say, hmm, maybe this is not a viable business. If it's not showing the records that there's a potential for us to make profit, then it's not a viable business and probably should not be going into that business. So what we've done with our quantitative analysis is to just find out as much information as possible to see whether or not this is a viable business idea, an idea that we should probably go with or an idea that maybe we should stop at the beginning rather than pushing through and then spending money and having incurring a lot of expenses when we're actually not bringing in any form of revenue. All right, um, so just a quick run through of what we've said so far. In terms of getting data, which we, we, we would need to do when we're trying to do an assessment, usually there are several tools that you can use. And um, these tools are categorized into primary data tools and then secondary data tools. So primary data is you going out there to get information about the business. So I am going to give out questionnaires, for example, or a copy of questionnaire to, for example, to people to see if they would actually buy my product. I'm going to have um, focus groups. I'm going to have interviews. All of those things are you getting actual data by yourself to determine whether or not your business is viable. On the other hand, we have secondary data. So secondary data is you saying, um, you know what, I probably don't have to get all this information by myself. If I Google Statistics Canada, for example, I will get as many information as I need as possible. So from Statistics Canada, I can know what the population is. I can know um, how many retailers are in this field or how many manufacturing industries, organizations are in this particular field or how many contractors are in this specific field that I'm interested in. So what you're doing is getting information from reports, getting information from studies, from statistics, um, or maybe even through 
social media. So putting out this information on, let's say, your LinkedIn page, putting information out on your Facebook, on your Instagram, and then actually getting information from all of those places, those are secondary data. So usually they're not expensive. Um, they're already published. They've probably gone through some level of review. Sometimes they may, they may not be so relevant to your specific business because they haven't been created with your business at the back of their minds. However, with primary data, most times it's very important because you get information that is relevant, specific to the idea that you have. You get information that is very current. Um, it might be expensive, but really what you're getting is enough information that would help you determine for sure whether your business idea is one that you should run with. So while doing all of this, your whole goal is just to determine whether or not your business idea is viable. Now, if you've done all of this and you can actually see that, hey, there's a potential for revenue, and then you go ahead with going to the next step, which is the business plan, which we're going to go into as we keep moving on, then you're going to have more information in your business plan that gives you concrete ground to see your business in three years. So think about the business plan as your blueprint. It's saying, is this a viable business today? Is it a business that is going to be viable in two years? Is it a business that will be viable in five years? What are the resources that I need to ensure that I get the best out of this business? All right, so the next thing we're going to go into is we're going to evaluate more of the internal and external environment in which the businesses operate in. And then finally, we're going to go into the business plan. And from the business plan, we're able to determine or see more aspects of the business that um, is very necessary for us. All right, thank you.